<laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, so we have part one uh, where we have established the characters, the setting, and some conflict, right? The conflict is that uh, the boy loves this girl, but he, she doesn't know he exists, pretty much, right? Um, typical love story. Um, how is this going to proceed? How is it going to move forward? Um, well, for a while, our boy sort of continues along in his love, in his uh, love-bound stupor, right? Um, he describes how her image accompanied him to places, even the hospital, hostile to romance, right? Um, and he describes in some pretty interesting detail the market where his mother goes, goes uh, he says marketing, where she goes shopping, right? Uh, There's no supermarkets back in those days, so you go to the butchers, you go to the... Um, you know, the bread, the bakers for bread. Um, you might go to a, a roadside stands for some of these things. Um, and so he calls these flaring streets, jostled by drunken men and bargaining women, amid the curses of laborers, the shrill litanies of shop boys who stood on guard by the barrels of pig's cheeks. Ew, right? Um, uh, you know, people singing, people shouting, people drinking, no doubt. Um, and so, you know, these things are, uh, again, the details that describe sort of a harsh world around him, right? He's got this beautiful, sanctified, almost holy love within him. Um, and, and he gives us that image. I, I imagine that I bore my chalice safely through a throng of foes. Um, a chalice is a, it's a cup, but it's not just any cup. It's a, it's a goblet. It's something gold. Um, in Roman Catholic um, tradition, which uh, Joyce, um, being Irish, had that Roman Catholic background, the chalice is the cup in which the uh, the Eucharist is held. So it's something not just uh, it's not just a nice cup. It's actually a cup that has a, a religious significance, right? Um, and again, that religion. My no, her name sprang to my lips in moments of strange prayers and praises, which I myself did not understand. Right, so his so his love takes on not just the a nice feeling inside. Right, this becomes his religion, his right, his his sanctified, his mission, his quest in life. Um, my eyes were often full of tears. I could not tell why, and at times the flood from my heart seemed to pour itself out into my bosom. Right. Um, so for, for a 12-year-old boy, 10 and 12-year-old boy, this is a, a pretty heavy load of, of emotion, right? Um, uh, but of course, here's the problem, right? Uh, I did not know whether I would ever speak to her or not. Or if I spoke to her, how could I tell her of my adored adoration, my confused adoration? Right? Um, so, so there's conflict, right? Uh, in this case, it's an internal conflict. It's not that he loves her, but she won't refuses to love him back. It's he loves her, but he can't seem to bring himself to tell her this, right? He can't risk it. Maybe he's too shy. Maybe he's afraid, right? But the conflict is all within him and within his heart, within his mind, um, as is this whole romance, in fact. But we'll get to that. Um, at last, she spoke to me. Okay, so the plot moves forward a little bit here, right? Um, and what does she ask? She says, are you going to Araby? Now, Araby is a, um, a fair, uh, a sort of a, a bazaar, they call it. So a bunch of vendors uh, from out of town, um, possibly gypsies, you know, um, or, or travelers, as they're sometimes called in Ireland, would uh, come from town to town and set up their shops and, and sell these trinkets and things. Um, and... Uh, um, you know, people from the town would go and check it out and, and, and buy things. Um, she says she wants to go. He, she can't, right? Um, and he makes his promise, what he sees as a promise. If I go, I said, I will bring you something. Um, so now he's got what? He's got a, a way of, he's got motivation, right? He's got something more than just his, his sort of um, nebulous love for this girl. He's got a way to fulfill that love. Um, and now he's got a quest, right? Um, and what uh, what things are going to stand in the way of his achieving that quest? Well, there are several. As any hero on a journey will have to encounter 
dangers along the way, right? Think about an adventure story. Think about Lord of the Rings, right? The um, uh, the main character, uh, what's his name, Frodo, right, has to go to the mountain and, and get rid of this ring. And all along the way, there are these people who would take it and people who would steal it. And there are mountains to climb and there are, um, you know, dragons and all sorts of, of things that stand in the way, right? Uh, this is the same kind of story. He's got a quest. He's going to go to Araby and buy her something. Um, but how is he going? what's going to stand in his way? Well, first of all, he's got to get par permission from his parents. In this case, uh, not his parents, but his aunt and uncle. Um, one of the themes in Joyce's writing is about, um, is about fathers specifically, but parents being not very good, um, having severed relationships or, or damaged relationships with their children. Um, and we get a little hint of that in this, in this scene. Um, you know, the, uh, my aunt was surprised and hope it was not some Freemason affair. Uh, Freemasons are, are an organization, a benevolent organization, um, that had, uh, at the time, had a, had a very strained relationship with the Catholic Church. <coughs> but, uh, you know, this, of course, this mission obsesses him. I asked a few questions in class. I watched my master's face pass from amiability to sternness. He hoped I was not beginning to idle. In other words, no one in the world understands him, understands his quest, right? The adults certainly don't, right? Um, neither do the children, right? I hardly had any patience with the serious work of life, which now it stood, now that it stood between me and my desire seemed to me child's play, ugly, monotonous child's play. Um, this beautiful, sanctified love that he has has the effect of also casting the rest of his world into darkness, and there's a lot of light and dark in this, in this story. Um, and so then he's got to get, and, and he's got to get permission from his uncle, but he's also got to get money out of his uncle. Okay, and so um, he's got this this great scene where he's waiting for the uncle to come back, and still won't come back, still won't come back. So there's a kind of suspense here. Um, I found Mrs. Mercer, the mother, uh, the aunt's friend, is sitting there. Oh, well, it doesn't look like it's going to go, right? When things seem darkest, at 9 o'clock, my uncle comes. Um, another detail, you know, talking about family relationships. I heard him talking to himself and heard the hall stand rocking when it had received the weight of his overcoat. I could interpret these signs. How do we interpret these signs? He comes in, he's talk he comes in at 9 o'clock, right, late at night. He was mumbling to himself. The, he throws his coat on the hall stand, and it, so with so much force that it rocks over. Uh, he's drunk. Yeah, the uncle is is drunk, and this is Joyce's sort of very um, subtle way of showing that. Um, <clears throat> he protests. He says, "No, no, no! It's too late. People are in bed." I did not smile. My aunt said, "Can't you give him the money? Let him go. You've kept him late enough as it is." Of course, this becomes um, a bone of contention because here comes the uncle drunk late, right? And, and so she takes his, she takes his uh, side. Um, the uncle gives him his money and, and starts prattling on about some old poem, um, but he can't be bothered. He's got to go off. He's got to fulfill his quest. Okay, so we've got building suspense and building action toward this moment when he's going to fulfill his mission. He's going to achieve his goal, right? Um, if he's a uh, uh, if he's rocky, this is moving into the final fight scene, you know, um, whatever. So this is, in many ways, this, like I say, this story follows a very traditional quest or hero's adventure um, until we get to the end. And I'll get to that in the next video.